Thank you all. Uh, thank you all for coming this morning. Uh, my name is John Hamry. I'm the president at CSIS. I am not on your program, but I wanted to take credit for a great conference, and so I decided to invite myself, force myself on Ernie, and say, "No, I want to come and say good morning to everybody." Thank you. Uh, we're we're delighted to have you all here. Uh, this is a very important. Uh, conference, and I'm just, uh, when I see the quality of the people in the audience, it just reflects how important this is. And I want to say a thank you to all of you for coming. I also want to say a, a hearty thank you to John Negroponte for joining us this morning and for launching it. I know this is going to be an exceptionally uh, important day and actually an exceptionally important opening presentation. We need to start this whole discussion with the foundations. What's going on and where are our interests. No one is better positioned to do that than John Negroponte. Uh, of course, he was in his in kind of reverse order in his last job. Of course, he was the Deputy Secretary of State. I think the first or only the second career Foreign Service officer that had ever made that stature uh, to, to, be, to be the Deputy Secretary of State. Before that, of course, he was our first Director of National Intelligence. Uh, then going back in time, he served as ambassador in numerous critical postings to include the United Nations, uh, to include uh, uh, the Philippines, and I think it's in that context where Ernie has worked with him the most, and uh, where John brought his typical strategic insight and perspective uh, to a region that's understood, under-understood. I mean, we just don't focus on it enough in Washington. Uh, which is part of the reason why we were so uh, grateful that Ernie joined us and that we can put uh, Southeast Asia really more on the policy landscape. And nothing uh, could be a better way to launch this day than, uh, than to have John Negroponte, Secretary Negroponte. Uh, Ernie, why don't you get this started for real? I want to say again, thank you to all, all of you for coming. We're going to have a long day, but it's going to be a good day, and I look forward to being with you later in the day. Thank you, Ernie. Thanks, Let's go. John. One of the things I love about um, being in the CSIS family is that um, uh, we have great leadership, uh, as you can see. And uh, Dr. Hamry, uh, uh, thank you very much for, for doing the introduction of, uh, of uh, Ambassador Negroponte. I think, uh, I think um, that was very well done. I'm not going to try to repeat it. Uh, but I would like to welcome everyone. This is a very important uh, conference. Uh, I think the timing uh, is, is special. Uh, it, we are meeting and convening just ahead of Secretary Clinton's uh, planned departure uh, next month for the ASEAN Regional Forum. And as the White House and, and other capitals around Asia are planning uh, for the East Asia Summit uh, to be held in Bali in November. So this is a very important um, discussion. Uh, I really want to thank those of you uh, who are the experts and officials who've traveled from around the world, frankly, to, uh, to join us from Asia, from Europe, from around the United States. We've got a great panel uh, over the next two days, and I want to thank you for joining us. I want to make a note, too, that um, the discussion today is on the record. Uh, we are also webcasting uh, this uh, presentation, so uh, what you say and, uh, and, the, and your questions will be, uh, will be part of the record. CSIS will publish a full uh, publication and report uh, based on the, the discussions and the presentations uh, from this meeting. So I hope uh, you'll uh, participate um, uh, uh, very uh, enthusiastically. We have allowed enough time for panelists to share their thoughts in a fulsome way, and we have allowed enough time for a lot of discussion and give and take. This is meant to, uh, was, we're, we, do, we are planning to spend two days to come up with um, some new ideas about how to address the issue of maritime security in the South China Sea. We want to come up with some conclusions and some recommendations. You all have been invited because of your uh, thoughtful efforts uh, on the policy side or your coverage of these issues from the media or in the policy, uh, from the policy making point of view. Uh, your ability to uh, influence outcomes. So I want to thank you again for coming. Now let me uh, do what I said I wouldn't do, but just reintroduce a, a great American leader and, and a friend, 
Uh, John Negroponte, as uh, Dr. Hamry mentioned, uh, is our former uh, Deputy Secretary of State, Director of National Intelligence, the U.S. Uh, representative to the United Nations, I think four-time ambassador, am I missing one? Uh, four-time ambassador, and currently Vice Chairman of McClarty Associates and uh, lecturer in Grand Strategy at his alma mater, uh, Yale College. So uh, please join me in welcoming John Negroponte. Thank, uh, thank you, uh, Ernie. It's always, uh, uh, first of all, uh, it's a pleasure to see you, and uh, it's always been a pleasure to work with you in, in the past, in your various previous uh, incarnations, uh, and in your present one as well. I was honored that uh, Dr. Hamry would come down and uh, sort of set the stage for our, our meeting uh, this morning. Uh, I was very pleased to uh, accept the invitation uh, that uh, Ernie extended to me to open today's conference on maritime security in the South China Sea. The focus of the discussion over the next two days is both important uh, and timely. Uh, I might mention uh, just a few parts of uh, my uh, background uh, over 44 years in uh, government service that uh, have uh, enabled me to work uh, on various aspects of this issue, or on its periphery at least, and tangentially. Uh, first of all, uh, I spent four years way back early in my career uh, in Vietnam. So I certainly know, uh, uh, know uh, that part of the world uh, uh, fairly well. Uh, I was ambassador to the Philippines, as was earlier mentioned, and I was there during the time that there was the controversy over uh, Mischief Reef. I remember that uh, extremely uh, well. Uh, I uh, have worked uh, interminably, it seems, on the Law of the Sea uh, Convention over various decades, uh, starting as early as 1970 when um, I was asked, I was in a little planning unit in the National Security Council during uh, the Nixon-Kissinger uh, era, and I was asked to uh, chair a study on what the United States position ought to be on the law of the sea, and that kind of set the stage for the renewed law of the sea negotiations that started uh, in Caracas in 1974. But I can remember the original being uh, one of the drafters of the original National Security Decision Memorandum that that uh, defined uh, our position on that question. And then, as luck would have it, I was called back to be the Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for Oceans and Fisheries at one point in my career during the Carter administration. And during the administration of President Reagan, after service in Honduras, I came back to be the Assistant Secretary for Oceans, Environment, uh, and si uh, Science. Uh, again, with uh, a large quotient of Law of the Sea questions. And then as Deputy Secretary of State, I was the last, uh, the last effort to get the Law of the Sea ratified, which was at the very end of the uh, uh, George W. Bush administration. I was the lead uh, witness for uh, the State Department uh, in that effort, which regrettably uh, did not succeed. I'm, I'm given to understand that uh, there may be uh, uh, another effort to uh, get the uh, Law of the Sea Treaty ratified. It's high time uh, we did so. Just about every key interest of the United States favors the agreement. Uh, government, industry, military, you name it. Uh, everybody thinks it's a good thing, and yet somehow, up until now, we have not been able to, uh, to push it through. So I sincerely hope that if another effort is under, undertaken, and I hope one is, that uh, we will get that treaty ratified. And I think it would be very much in the interests of the United States of America. Now, the center of gravity of U for US interests in terms of uh, economy, politics, and security alike are appropriately shifting towards uh, Asia. 
And as was mentioned, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton is preparing to travel to Indonesia for the ASEAN Regional Forum, the ARF, next month. And President Obama will participate in the East Asia Summit and the third U.S. ASEAN Summit in November. He will be the first American president to join the East Asia Summit, and then he will host the APEC Leaders Summit in Honolulu. As Asia's economic promise develops with the rapid expansion, uh, development of China, India, and the ASEAN countries, so too has the complexity of security and political relations in the region. As we will hear uh, over the next days, there is more at stake as countries concerned about their future vie to secure long-term access to water, energy, food, and the important sea lanes of navigation and communication. Inevitably, there is competition for resources, and country, countries have, unsurprisingly, different interpretations of the extent of marine resource jurisdiction. There is cert that is certainly the case today in the South China Sea, where multiple countries have expressed their interests in various ways and have begun to use diplomatic, legal, and in some ca unfortunate cases, military power to define and defend their positions. The promise of peace and prosperity in the Asia Pacific is too dear to all of us to allow misinterpretations, jurisdictional disputes, and other disagreements to become dangerous conflicts. The sum of common interests between countries of the region far outweighs the differences between them. That is why you are here today with an incredibly able and experienced group of experts, officials, and other interested parties. We will be exploring various perspectives and interpretations to try to deepen our mutual understanding and help us to advise policymakers and leaders on courses of action uh, and approaches that may promote and enhance satisfactory peaceful outcomes. We will hear from top experts from around the globe and, and have a chance to engage them in discussion. I am pleased that CSIS has taken the initiative to convene such a group at this time. I congratulate all of you for dedicating your time and energy to this cause over the next 48 hours and hopefully well beyond that. Once again, Thank you for inviting me to kick off the discussion. I'm looking forward to the dialogue, the conclusions, and to the CSIS report that will be produced as a result. Thank you very much.